Hey, hey, Monday, Monday. Happy Monday, Monday. Monday. And almost a Dunday Monday, which is even better. Dunday Monday. I like that. That's got a good ring to it, brother. That's got a good oh, ring to it. change our show to Dunday Monday show. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. That's got an interesting ring to it. That's got an interesting so, ring to it. Hey, how you doing, brother, man? I'm doing good. And it, 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 I know I look smarter. I didn't get any smarter. I just got glasses because I'm getting old. So not smarter, just no. same stupid in glasses. You're you're looking good, man. How many how many fingers am I holding up? 17. At yep. least. You got it. You nailed you nailed it, man. You nailed glasses it. Glasses are perfect, man. <laughs> like a boss. I like it. I like it. You know, now, man, my, weekend was, my weekend was good. Um, we had a uh, reenactment this weekend, had a tactical battle down at Spring Mill State Park here in Indiana. Nice. Got to uh, do some fun fighting out in the uh, village and threw a lot of powder down range. It's always a good time. The weather worked for us this weekend. We got to stay in the cabins, had the fireplace rolling. Great time, man. It was a great time. Nice. Well, I mean, it's a good thing you were uh, you had a chance to get indoors because Friday, I mean, middle of the week last week was beautiful. I mean, middle of February and it's 60 degrees in central Indiana, like holy smokes. And then Friday we were messaging. You're like, hey, I'll be off the grid, period, till Sunday. And I'm, I'm looking outside and there's snow flurries. And I mean, like, seriously, from Thursday to Friday, 60s to 30s and snow. It's like, what the hell? So Yeah, Friday night into Saturday morning was a little cool, but, uh, you, you know, once, once we got up Saturday morning, Saturday night was nice. Kept the fire rolling. It was good, man. Love staying in those cabins. Nice. What did you get to do this weekend? Man, not a whole lot. Not a whole lot. And just enjoyed uh, <laughs> not having a whole lot planned for, for once. So, got to piddle around the – the shop a little bit, you know, work on some stuff. You know, I got my indoor garden. It's time to start seeds for the spring and yes, clean sir. out, you know, all the pepper plants, tomatoes, and get them, get them rolling. Look at there, chicken wing, 80 degrees. Yeah, no, no kidding. Well, hey, it was mid 50s here, Jeff. So, you know, from Texas to Indiana, mid 50s, February 20th. I'll take it. I'll take I, it. I just wish winter would keep wintering until spring and then become spring instead of confusing me. <laughs> Like it's, it's spring, definitely, uh, winter. It's winter definitely, and spring. Definitely good. Outside of that, man, my 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 young my little one, <laughs> my 17-year-old woke up yesterday just feeling fine, except for just you know, not not uh being able to go too long without keeping anything down. So it was kind of kind of weird. She was kind of down and out for most of the day. She's good to go today. So I don't know. There's maybe, a nasty maybe. stomach thing going around. I had it uh a week before last. It, it had me down. I think uh, I think Dad's homemade chicken and noodles helped out a little bit. I hope maybe or it's just time passed. Probably just time. Time. Probably just time. But hey, yeah. hey, noodles always help. I don't care what it is. I love me some homemade noodles, man. Get some, get some comfort foods. But... Miss Meg's grandma oh. makes the best noodles. The homemade noodles? Oh yeah. That's like a rite of passage when you learn to make grandma's noodles. Telling you, you know, speaking of, and I know we've got a couple amazing gentlemen on here, but real quick, my my grandmother made some killer. Um, killer homemade noodles and my mom for Christmas last year she bought me a cutting board and she like uh, did what, like a soldering iron and burnt the recipe for the noodles in the back of that cutting board which I've got it ingrained in my head but I thought man yeah so I, I, I dig some homemade family noodles. heirloom that's amazing yeah I, I dig some homemade noodles brother I, I cheated I made everything else from scratch except for the noodles but yeah anyway <laughs> I love the cutting right. No. Anyway, we got, some, we, got some cool cats. we got some cool cats on the show tonight. Definitely got some cool cats. I had to bring some some, some mustaches in, dude. I was feeling jealous, and uh, I'm over here much ass lacking, and then I see you on the other side, and then I got to bring guys like this on. Look at this. Well, hello. Yep. Hey, hey, what's up, brother? How you doing? Oh, you know, another day in paradise. You guys hear me all right? Yes, sir. Loud and clear. Loud and clear. Uh, Coming through well. So, just to just to tie into what you guys were talking about with family recipes, uh, ours was biscuits, homemade biscuits from scratch. Hell yeah! Uh, my my aunt Shirley, uh, I remember every Sunday morning getting up and driving down to Sell Creek, Tennessee, just to go and get biscuits and gravy that she started making at five o'clock in the morning. So I'll drive down right now for some. 
I wish I, I wish she would give me the recipe. She still won't give me the recipe. But so I guess here's the here here would be my question: buttermilk or no? Buttermilk. I have an okay stash. Okay, there you go. <laughs> I see how that is. Chicken wing. Oh no, for sure. Ray's got to well, kill it. Wasn't, wasn't enough to win at you matter, but that's okay. You know, <laughs> it's all right. So, what's so up, guys? So, how? I'm glad to get. I'm glad you guys had a great weekend. Uh, thank you for having me on tonight. I uh, I had a I had a I had a wet Saturday. I'm just gonna put that out there. It was very moist, very moist Saturday. Moist. You gotta slip that in there for the viewers. <laughs> Absolutely. So. Uh, Mad Viking Kentucky uh, did the polar plunge this past Saturday. Saw that. Uh, Saw that. Very cool. Props, Props brother. <laughs> yeah, I ain't jumping in the water. I saw. I saw some of the. I, I checked out some of the videos, and uh, it looked like a pretty cool, pretty cool setup. And at least the sun was shining. I mean, it probably could have been way worse, but right. Oh, absolutely. I mean, like, I I, I walked around barefoot for about an hour. Because, like, they had the water kind of, like, flowing down, uh, like, from people splashing. So, like, the water was going down towards the drain. So, I, like, walked through the water for, like, an hour just trying to acclimate to just the 40-degree pool. <laughs> get the, get the, at least the, the cold feet acclimated to it a little bit, right? <laughs> right. Hey, Still Ray. didn't help when I dived in. So. so, they had the water running and everything, right? Did you see any ducks? No, no. You should have fed them. I... <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of feeding the ducks, was I, was I, was I allowed to get in on that? So. <laughs> Absolutely, got okay. to. Hey, I seen a segue. I took it. Hey, I, I appreciate it. So, but no, no, man. Other than that, uh, it was a very busy weekend, but it was good. It was productive. Uh, we had a lot of things. Uh, we had a lot of things going on. Of course, we had the polar plunge, and we had a Mad Vikings. Uh, monthly meeting uh, for Kentucky chapter uh, recorded an interview for this weekend uh, for this week uh, for nice. Bearding Without Borders. Definitely and of course out Ray Thursday nights on Bearding Without Borders. Absolutely, seven p.m. Eastern. Check out Ray. Yes, you know, leave appreciate a legacy. It. Leave a legacy. I should have. I should have worn my. I should have worn my t-shirt. I feel like I'm not. Uh, I feel like I'm not repping uh, without the the Bearding Without Borders T-shirt. So apologies. Yeah, I do. Have you know, one. I keep. I, I've had a few people ask me uh, if I was going to do another run, and I'm debating on it. I still have a little bit of material to make some shirts left. So you know, maybe we can get some interest going on that. So, but well, you know, I want one. Oh, no, I know you do. I know what you want. You want my hoodie, but. I gotta find a. I'm gonna. Have, I'm gonna have to find a new supplier for What's that. What's up, Dad? So, but no, we had a Mad Vikings uh, monthly meeting uh, for Kentucky, and it was a good one. But we did a little bit something extra. Uh, that I day. like extra. Tell us about extra. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, kept it kind of quiet. Ron, of course, he knows about it because uh, this this whole thing kind of started with me and Ron. I'd say what almost eight months ago. Yeah. Uh, Close to me it. and Ron, me and Ron sat down one night and was talking about uh, ways to unite the clubs in our state. And yep. we we kind of laid down some guidelines and some thought processes to it. And we kind of okay. we kind of parted kind of parted the waters and just and said, we're going to we're going to roll with what we can. Uh, took me a little bit longer than expected, but you know, as Ron, as everybody knows, Ron got ICBC up and running, and uh, this was the this weekend was the first official meeting of the Kentucky Whisker Society, um, which is comprised currently of seven clubs, uh, which okay. would be it was uh it's actually Mad Viking Kentucky chapter, the Beard and Loathing. Bearded Villains, Kentucky chapter, nice. Slugger City Villains, Derby City Whisker Club, Beard Mob East Region. I have included Beard Mob into this mix uh, because honestly, we have a lot of good luck. Uh, we have a we have a good relationship with Beard Mob, and I I, re, I would be remiss if I didn't include them in. And then, of course, last but not least, 
Cincinnati Beard Barons with Mr. Taxi Phil. Oh, yeah. No. Uh, well, wait, so, Cincinnati's in Ohio, for God's sake. I'm just kidding. Yeah, it's, it's Cincinnati it's doesn't count as Ohio most of the time. So, no, I, I, yeah, I, I get you. I get, I'm, just, I'm just giving you shit, man. No, I oh, dig that. Fine. That's, that's awesome. That's awesome. I love that. And, you know, I think that whole mentality of how do we bring all the organizations that are, you know, trying to drive and push and, and do the same collective things, how do, how do you pull everybody together so we're at least – cognizant and aware of what the other clubs are doing and how do we support each other and you know so i i dig it that that is awesome that is awesome so you know ron I, red gave me a little heads up that uh, you guys have been talking and you had been thinking about doing something like this so now I'm, I'm i'm stoked you're pulling it together and had your first official meeting that's badass it was uh it was it was a lot easier than i thought uh, and and ron can tell you from experience uh because me and him have had this same kind of quack quack do we need to do another dance? No, I'm a, I'm a lot prettier than Mark Burns. So, oh, <laughs> hang on, Kyle. We'll have we'll have Mark on here in just a few. <laughs> oh, <boy>. oh. <laughs> okay. Out. Hey, I, I I figured I was done at that point. Hey, <laughs> seven shows. I've never had to do that. You're the no, first one, bud. That was kind of funny. I'll take the honor. No, uh, Mark Burns. Mark Burns is honestly one of the best photographers in the uh, in the beard game right now. Uh, I, I rank him up there with Inkara, and uh, I have a lot of respect for Mark and his uh, his wild ass mustache. Um, He's got a killer trying to get on yeah. his love. So yeah, you all you all no, making me jealous tonight. But no, uh, the KWS is. I think we're going to go a little, we're going to get, we're going to take it a little one step further. We actually have some events that we're brokering right now. Uh, so I hope to be able to come back on at some point and tell you guys about what we have going on. And uh, I'm hoping that of course, Indiana beard coalition will be involved with that as well. Uh, so there's a lot of cool things in, in the pipeline, maybe something with the special Olympics, waiting to see what's going to happen with that. Uh, but I do thank you guys for being very supportive. Uh, you know, Ron has been my backbone uh, during the creation of this. And so is Andrew Orton, who is now, it was my co-founder with this organization. And it's, uh, it's been trying, but it came together a lot easier than I thought it would. And apparently it was, uh, apparently the, the villains, which are always the, you know the ones that everybody kind of talks and says oh well they're kind of separate but the apparently the villains kentucky chapters were definitely ready for a change and wanting to work together and i got i got super fortunate with that and i'm excited to see where this goes so and, and it is nice it's it's great to see that organizations that kind of <laughs> outside of the generalized bearded community are getting involved and and they're seeing because look brother you can raise 4,000 at your comp and we can raise 8,000 at our comp. Imagine if we'd done it together. Exactly. And that was kind of my pitch was imagine what happens when we all pull our resources together and create a large impact on a community. So yeah. Who really wins, right? That's that, yeah. the community and the organizations that we're pulling together to support. That's, that's who wins. And if your heart's in it for that, then it's a, I don't know, for me, it's a no brainer, yeah. right? It 100%. I agree with you wholeheartedly. So, and when I started the Indiana Coalition, that was my mission. It wasn't anything other than coming together for the betterment of our charities and our communities. And, 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 and I, I, and I, I, I have taken my lead from you. So, I thank you. For those who don't know, me and Ray talk pretty often. We're kind of idea guys. We, he comes up with some harebrained shit and asks me about it, and I come up with something stupider and ask him about it, and then we come up with something that's pretty decent. Yeah, between the two of us, we got a whole brain. So yeah. <laughs> well, I'd say I'd say I'd say you both are functioning pretty pretty well as a whole individually and yeah, collectively. It's just like a we're, a, we're whole, right. a whole lot of brains. It's not just a whole brain. Yeah. Man, it, we're high functioning. It's well, Ray, it dude, I appreciate you coming on on short notice tonight. I was excited. You told me about the KWS stuff today. I was excited. I, I just wanted it out there. I wanted people to know what's hey, going on. 
So, I thank you guys for the opportunity to talk about it. Uh, I I love you guys. Thank you so much. Ron, I'm sure I will talk to you before this week is out. Uh, Absolutely. Stash, if you ever need anything, brother, you know how to find me. So Same, brother. Same. Thanks for popping on, man. You take care. And uh, uh, Bearded Hero? Possibly. We'll have to see what happens. So. Right on. Well, I, no, I think I saw the other day that you weren't uh, you weren't going to make uh, Mob Fest. I think I, I think I heard you mention you weren't going to make it down there. But I know we got a couple uh, coming up here in March, end of March and uh, and first uh, of April. Hirams and well, and uh, and uh, Beard Hero. So I would be remiss if you guys don't mind to give me just another minute. Uh, nope. I would be remiss if I don't mention Bach Fest Appreciate competition you, this weekend in Cincinnati, Ohio. Yes. Uh, at MVPs. If you would like to see me, I'll be there because I am judging my very first competition oh, at Bachfest awesome. this year. So, you judge nice. little son of a. Never mind. Uh, nice. Well, I see you. I see you. So, if you guys well, want, uh, come out and see us in Cincinnati this weekend. And uh, I hope to see everybody there, including you guys. So. No, I appreciate that. Uh, I won't be able to make it. I have a date night plan for me and Miss Meg. We were so busy on Valentine's Day, we didn't get to do anything uh, major. So I had some activities scheduled, and we're going to take a Saturday to ourselves. Yeah. You know what? I respect that. And you know what I mean? I love you and Ms. Meg. Oh, so many. So many. So many. But, all right, guys. I love you. Thank you very much. Have a great night, guys. Love you, bro. Be good. Raise a good man. Stuff happening in Kentucky, my man. Nah, that's that that's that's cool stuff. That's cool stuff. I, I wish I could make it to the Bach Fest too. We got a couple club members coming in town. I'm gonna be smoking some ribs, doing some doing some cooking. I wish I'd have known a little bit beforehand and we could have scheduled a different weekend, but not gonna make the Bach Fest. But it sounds like awesome times. And who sounds doesn't love like it? I'm gonna try to make it to eat your ribs between naps? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want I don't wait. Let's be clear. I don't want to fuck with your date night plans. Uh, you, you all need some, you need some time, but you know, you know where I am. Slide Always by. time for ribs, homie. Always time for ribs. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Well, we got another pretty, uh, I'm just going to say amazing mustached man uh, sitting in the background here. Why don't we pull this guy on? Hey, <laughs> what's up, Mark? How you doing, brother? I'm doing pretty good. How are you guys doing? Thanks for having me on. Doing, doing good, well. Bro. Thanks for coming. Pleasure on. having you on. Yes, it's a it's an honor. Absolutely, absolutely. So I guess we can kind of jump right in. Hey, smoked pork butt, hell of a good. Right on, chicken wing. So I guess uh, for for starters, uh, those on here that don't know who you are, how about you introduce yourselves to us? Oh God. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> where, where to start, right? <laughs> I, well, geez, boy, I guess the reason I'm here is because of this bearding, bearding journey I'm having. So uh, I think everything's connected to that. But I'm rolling backwards, I'm I'm 63, so I grew up in the 70s and 60s, and there's such a big story in the bearding journey just happened to happen in the last seven years. So. Um, I know you guys wanted to talk about my photography, but the, the beard story, geez, I won the national championship back in 2019 for my, um, styled mustache and great beard and, uh, 20, you got uh, a great mustache. You have a great mustache and a great beard combo. Yep. Just <laughs> Absolutely. Look at that. But uh, the mustache is a challenge. I'll tell you, Taxi Phil's got me uh, worried every time I go to Cincinnati. I got to be on par with that guy, man. He's watching every little every little thing I do, and I make a lot of mistakes. But 2021, I went to Scranton, and I repeated as a national champion. And God darn it, if I didn't get pulled up there with the 50 of them at the end of the night and I got picked as best to show at national. So in 2021, I was basically the top rated beard in the U.S. So I was feeling yeah. good about that one. That's, I, you know, that's impressive. I always, 
I always dreamed I could do something like this, but I didn't want to say it. <laughs> when we were standing up there, the numbers were going through my head and they were saying exactly the numbers I wanted to hear. So it was really a wild experience. And then, of course, uh, last year I went down to Cincinnati and um, I, I did my thing and tried to replicate a taxi fill mustache with the low hanger. And uh, the low and, and I, I won best to show at the Cincinnati event, the big big whisker revival, big whisker revival. Yeah, so I'm getting to the point where everybody's pissed when I go there and take over everything. None of them. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was my staring, that stash. staring through the curl right there, man. So, so, how long have you been? How long have you been growing? This amazing, beautiful bushiness. I started in 2016, and I was uh, uh, at work, and a photographer told me he had been shooting an event called the Circus of Whiskers in Detroit, and he said there was a beard team in Detroit, and I said, you got to be crazy. People do that. I had seen the beard championships, but I never thought, you know, I would be any part of that. And uh, gotcha. one of my photographer friends, he said, you know, I'd like to shoot. Pic Everybody wanted to shoot pictures at me because I sold picture. I showed showed I sold equipment to photographers. So they wanted me as their subject. And then okay. uh, I was introduced to Murder City Facial Hair Crew in Detroit. And uh, I joined that crew when I went to the first circus that I attended. And it was quite an experience. So. I've been in bearding since 2016 now, and uh, um, it's been a lot of fun. Um, Hell yeah. But now it, it seems that everybody wants me to bring my camera along. I started just shooting <laughs> pictures because I thought it was fun. You guys are all made up. You look like you're all so good looking and so prepped. Aww. And I figure I'd take pictures of it. You know, I don't have to do makeup. You know, you guys are all, all fixed up for me. So eventually that led to... Uh, everybody wanted me to bring the studio along. Um, so I, I have a technical background in photography. I started with film way back in uh, the seventies when I was in high school. So okay. uh, I, I shot pictures for the journalism class. So I learned to take pictures and I like to write the captions cause I had full control then I could say whatever I wanted. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, um, when you want to hear more about that? Yeah, sure, absolutely. absolutely. When I was, yes. uh, when I shot pictures through the four years in high school, and I had access to a dark room, and I developed slides back in those days. And um, at at our uh, our awards night, it was a Catholic school, and uh, I did not show the pictures, and we wanted we did a really cool. It was like uh, MTV before MTV, and I had two okay. slide projectors going and music, and all the parents, nice. all the parents were in the crowd, and the principal was a really strict nun, and she said you can't show that, and we had all worked on it, we were going to have a riot that night, and all our parents were there, <coughs> and she said, Mark, do you assure me there's nothing bad in these pictures? And I said, Yeah, yeah, there's nothing, nothing really. And we uh, we showed it. There was only one picture in the bathroom, that, and nothing was shown. But uh, it it was really the parents came up to me at the end, and they said it was really, really excellently done. And I was, you know, that was pretty well. I uh, enjoyed shooting pictures mostly of people, but uh, my career went into. Uh, um, working for three big camera stores in the Detroit area. And I called on all the professional photographers. So I would travel to the car studios and the portrait studios and um, anything having to do with photography. I, it was my job to go out there and make sure they had their film, their chemistry, their cameras, their lenses. And I love the portrait photographers because I got to see them interact with people and um, my expertise always was shooting pictures of people. But um, when, when I'm going to the bearding events, it's either I'm walking the crowd or I'm standing in front of the background. And those are two much different things. So, um, sure. so it, it, 
it takes a little bit of knowing your equipment and knowing people. But I, if you notice the first time I met you guys, if you ever stepped in front of my camera, I got to know you. I got to talk to you. I got to relax you. And uh, that's a lot of how um, how I get to meet people. So, and, and I always love carrying the equipment. I always want the equipment. So, but. And you no, spoke I, about that, like, and I never thought that's like a whole dead kind of probably uh, career is in, in the sales of like the chemicals for the dark room and the films and the stuff because everything's oh, yeah. gone digital. So it's definitely a whole different environment yeah. now than it would have been back then. I'm yeah. sure it was a demanding career at that point with all well, the studios and everything. Each one of my stores had trouble keeping me in a box. So I had always wanted to do more than what the store wanted me to do. So it went from me being on the on the counter sales to me wanting to go out and do outside sales. And um, it eventually led to where I was taking a motor coach and we were going to the Mississippi River and shooting pictures of eagles. And I was leading photo tours. So um, that... And, and of course, I can talk forever. So we, there was never a dull moment between Detroit and uh, Iowa. So, uh, oh, I bet. And well, my, and tour, tour in Iowa in a motor coach, you need somebody that can be able to, to talk, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, so that, the heartland there is not a lot of not a lot of sights once you get past, uh, you know, kind of the 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 the, the gateway arc in you know Missouri. And, yep. <laughs> Right after yeah, Chicago, it gets kind of quiet. Yeah. Unless, unless there's a snowstorm, then you're a little excited. <laughs> oh, for sure. And I, you know, I to your point about the um, you know the portraiture and, and engaging with people. My first beard competition, you were taking photography in uh, Beard Mob Indiana's uh <clears throat> Beard Olympics, excuse me, back in August. And uh, I mean I was nervous as a you know a, 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 a a cat in a room full of rocking chairs, I guess maybe is a good expression. I, I've never been around a group of such amazing people before. And man, you're you just, you were so personable and nice. And I feel like, man, look at this guy with this amazing mustache and beard. And he's actually talking to me like I'm not a, a, a weird ass with a mustache. It's, it was kind of cool. It was nice. <laughs> no, you're still just a weird ass with a mustache. I am still a weird ass with a mustache, but no, I, I my, my broader point is you definitely have a, a, a personality to kind of put people at ease and just be like, Hey, just stand there and look tough. And I'm like, not, I'm like the least toughest person in the, in the world. And you're like, look tough. I'm like, you know, <laughs> but I, I, just, I, I, I liked your approach and it was a, you know, you, you definitely left an impression on me um, as a first, as a first meeting. I appreciate that. I Absolutely. first was photographed by Mark in West Virginia um, last year. That was the first time I, I, I'd, I'd met Mark, but that's the first time I had been photographed by Mark. And that's immediately when I asked him to go to Indiana because the pictures from West Virginia that he took were just so outstanding. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, there's our hey, photo. Look at that. That's pretty Is well. That from last, from last year, right? Yep. Speaking of, Chris Hall posted on here. Are you going to be able to make it uh, in June, Mark? Um, to the uh, Beard Fest, Appalachian well, I, Beard Fest. I haven't looked past uh, March. Um, of course, uh, um, I've got boy. Uh, I'm going down to Florida to the Renaissance Festival or to the Bay Area Renaissance Festival for four weekends. So I'll be there with uh, my sponsor, um, Natu Natural Viking. Hey, hey. So, okay. Viking. So that's my, I'm now a lead ambassador for their brand. So if you have never tried this stuff, you might want to take a look at it. It's fantastic. Keeps I, I got like some it. at Sasquatch last year. I got some to try. Yeah. Well, I mean, we don't we don't focus too much on beard products, but I guess I'll ask this: What's your favorite uh, scent? If you were going to recommend somebody for uh, for a natural Viking scent, what would be your uh, your first recommendation? Obsidian. That's the most popular. 
I, I personally use the maker because their oil and the maker oil has a growth serum in it. And I believe it's helping my head. So, <laughs> but it's definitely uh, working on the beard. It's definitely working on the beard. Just saying. <laughs> um, yeah, it, 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 it certainly has helped my beard grow healthy and strong. So, um, but that's it. I use their, their scent and their, um, um, the maker is my favorite of, of all, but when I'm at the counter, I see people buying a lot more of the obsidian. They really like that scent. So it seems to be the popular one. Yeah. Yeah. I guess you want to smell them all, all five of them. There's two new scents in their lineup. So, um, he's expanding the, the they've got a great product. It, it's mostly about the health of your face. And I can't tell you how many different brands I've tried over the years. Um, you know, when we compete, they hand us bags full of stuff and they're from every different company and uh, gosh, darn it. I try to try them all. And, uh, by the time <coughs> I use something for a week or two, I got to go back to my, uh, natural Viking stuff. Cause it really helps my beard go pop back to normal. So, um, I got you. I got you. Well, that looked like a balm. Was that a was that a balm or was that a? This is the balm. Yep. So he's got um, natural Viking has five different scents. There's uh, oils, balms, uh, beard wash. Which that's if you're going to buy one thing, buy at least a bar of the beard wash. Um, and then yeah, they've got a rice water treatment shampoo. They've got a uh, um, goat's milk body wash. And they have candles too that go with each one of the scents. So, but their beard products are fantastic. So, and they do ship. So it's at naturalviking.com or .net. And if you want to follow the Michigan Whisker Wars, it's MI Whisker Wars, and that's a series of uh, competitions that we throw for the public at a lot of the uh, local. Uh, festivals. Nordic Fighter Fire Festival is coming up next weekend down in Charlotte, Michigan. Yeah, right on. No, I was, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that because I I saw a post, I think it was from this past weekend, was a Whisker Wars uh, event. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Saw some photos from you. So, yeah, tell us tell us a little bit about the, the whole Whisker Wars. Well, um, that's um, part of uh, part of being associated with this great uh, company. Um, he uh, he usually has a tent or a booth at most of these festivals, these big festivals that I would normally wouldn't be a part of. And he gets in and suggests they like the idea of beard competition. So they need people that can run a beard competition respectfully and do it within their time limits. So we adjust to whatever the festival will give us as far as time and um, try to get the word out there. Many times we're picking people right out of the crowd. So a lot of guys that compete in these uh, competitions have never competed before, and it gives them a taste of what beard competitions are. And we encourage them to get up on the stage and do the things that we do. And then I grab that mic and I tell everybody in the audience, you know, you might not be familiar, but there's a whole league of people that do this every weekend in all the different cities and we raise over a million dollars in the last six years i hope that's true um but that's oh i'm sure there's no way it can't be true I'm yeah sure yeah. and i let the uh local public know that uh you know if you're trying to do if you're trying to get to get involved with a great group of guys and uh, look up your local beard team and do something charitable. And, uh, you know, that's what we do. So uh, it, it basically lets people know that there's people out there like us that are doing this and uh, that they could be involved too. So, yeah, I love the small festival uh, competitions. You don't get the crowd, you don't get all the, but you get people involved. I know we've done a small festival uh, competition last year in Peru, Indiana. Peru. And yep. just, getting some of the people from the locals to compete and just watching them have so much fun with it. Oh yeah. And like, where are we doing this next? And, and, and the questions and the engagement was, is really nice in those smaller environments. Yeah. Several people kind of mm -hmm. walking by like, what the hell is going on over there? And then, you know, 
few minutes later, they're like, oh, okay, well, this isn't it, this isn't as strange as maybe what I first thought it was. Like me many months ago, right? <laughs> it's like, you know, when uh, Red came up to me in a Walmart and was like, hey, I'm part of a, a bearding club. And I'm like, what the hell is this guy talking about? And, you know. <laughs> yep, that's true. Here we are. Yep. Um, Mark, do you have any competitions on the schedule this year that you're going to be at uh, doing photographs? Right now, I have to get back with one. Um, I have, I don't have my calendar with me, but it, it's for the beard, beard mob. I think the one down in uh, Nashville. Okay. Mm-hmm. Music yeah, City. the Moonshine Fest. Or uh, Moonshine, Moonshine Classic. Classic, yeah. Yep, that's the one I shot last year. Yep. And he nice. asked me to come back. Now, uh, when I uh, when I shoot, I always post my pictures on a site. Not everybody's happy about it, but there is cost usually. And normally, if I generate enough money, I can donate some money back to to the comp if if it accumulates to anything. So, um, but uh, that allow I noticed the pictures you showed; they were really low res. But that's that's why there's so many different facets to photography is high res low res whether you want to print there's when you're in a business you have to tax prints it's very complicated so um and i shoot so many different events for me to take orders for pictures it's very hard for me to do them one by one by phone so i have an automated system i discuss that with people if they ever want me to shoot that hey you know i put my pictures on a site and there's a copyright across the thing and not everybody likes that you know if i was shooting pictures with my phone it would be one thing but when i'm bringing my gear and i've got to spend two or three days after the fact working on the images i know some people do that and they offer their pictures for free but um uh, photography was a business for me and i was around photographers that had horror stories as far as um their images go so um, try to be well, I think it's fair, Mark. Like, uh, I, I, you know, I know a lot of people say that about the watermarks and everything. And I, and I don't mind posting a picture with the watermark on it because it brings you business. But, you know, like, uh, just for instance, if I want to buy a print and not get the watermark on it, I mean, they're, they're a couple bucks. Um, you can buy the digital copy or you can get one and they'll ship it to the mail to you. So it's not that inconvenient. So I, I totally understand it and get it. I mean, from you're a making your part. And you're trying to get reimbursed for your services, right? To your point, you're lugging around lights and backdrops and all this stuff, right? It's not like you're just walking around with your, your phones. It's thousands of dollars. Of yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So it's it's certainly certainly reasonable and not unaffordable. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I certainly don't go out trying to uh, promote it. It's not really my uh, – I'm retired, so uh, photography is – something I specialize in. I love to shoot product pictures too. So, um, but um, I'm not out there trying to make a business out of it really. Um, If I can do anything, it's to uh, uh, promote good men's care, men's health, take care, you know, I tell people when I'm working or at the, at the uh, festivals that the reason I do it is it's, you know, no, nowhere else in society do I see where guys are complimenting guys like we do at beard comps. Absolutely. I mean, we're walking up to each other. We say, that, God, your outfit looks great. Uh, you know, you're you're done to the hill. I mean, you don't see guys compliment each other ever like that. Except at a beard comp. We really appreciate how much effort that goes to. And I think in these days where a lot of the beard guys that compete are veterans they need a little pat on the back. They need a little boost. And guys are kind of considered like toxic anymore. So, I mean, to me, I'm like, hey, you know, we got enough problems. We should be supporting each other. And look, we have our ladies here. You got your ladies at the camps and we want them to be a part of it. What kind of great men are we? We take care of ourselves. We look good. We use nice products. We care about ourselves care about the ladies we want them to be involved we cheer them on we cheer our buddies on and i mean it's a good thing every time i go to a comp i come home and i say man i feel like i've been supported by all my friends and i hope i supported them so 
you know. And, and I think the half of the, the what everybody calls the post comp blues is you know the two or three days after a comp you're just like, oh yeah, and that, and that's because you are so lifted up and, and you feel so good and you got your friends and surrounded by people who love you and then. You know, not that we don't have our families and stuff at home, but you don't get the same kind of just genuine over and over compliments and complimenting each other. Just the whole atmosphere um, brings you up. And, and, and that's one of the things I loved about it with the brotherhood and the, the camaraderie. And yeah, oh, absolutely. 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 I don't think I could have I, I couldn't have phrased what you just said any better than how you just said it. I mean, that that's what pulled me into this this amazing group of, 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 of human beings. It's, it's that niceness, the generosity, the, 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 the compliment another man on the way his facial hair looks and mm -hmm. uh, amazing whiskerinas. I mean, I'd never even heard right. of something like that. And it's just the, just the general community. And that's what it is. It's, it is community. And it's not just those in that individual event at that particular time, but there is such a, broad group of people with that same mentality and it just you know you walk away from a competition with that i don't know that just that that happiness bucket in your in your soul is full and it's just yeah i, I hear you i feel you it's good stuff <laughs> <laughs> yeah it sure yeah. is and it doesn't matter whether you win or lose absolutely yeah, not. it really absolutely. doesn't matter so absolutely I mean, there's those it's days where you look at who beat you and you're like i yeah that that's <laughs> right. I mean, I deserve to be beat tonight. So, um, but it sure is. Uh, it's been wonderful for me. You know, I've got a whole new group of friends. As I get older, I don't see a lot of my younger days friends. So um, it's almost like making a whole new family for me. So I'm, I enjoy it. Well, Mark, we're talking about filling your soul bucket up, man. And, and I have to say, I was thumbing through some of your pictures from the previous weekend. And, and these pictures from when you went to see your to see your family, it just looks like you you were just enjoying every moment, and, and it made me so happy to see that in every picture. Oh, I had a week with my daughter, and she's nice. uh, she's she's uh, she's certainly my Valentine, and you know we both wanted to be with each other on Valentine's this year, so we went awesome. all the way down to San Diego and. She, you know, she's a therapeutic masseuse and she takes me on really grueling hikes that go straight up <laughs> and straight downhill. And then at the end of the night, she'll get a foot bath out and she'll soak my feet. And then she'll give me a therapeutic massage that like takes me off the table. And the next morning right. I pop up and we do it again. So she's it's. And, and I, I give, I'm actually uh, her inspiration as far as a masseuse, because I used to get both of my girls when they were eight or nine years old. I told them whoever got to bed first would get the first massage. So both my, I had no problem getting my girls to bed at nighttime and they were only eight and nine and boom, both kids in bed. And they, to this day, tell me that was a very touching moment between mom and, or between dad and the kids, you know? So, and then my, my youngest ended up being a therapeutic masseuse. She went to Thailand. She learned Thai massage and she's uh, the most amazing. Um, I can't believe how much she, she's a healing person from your mind to your oh. soul to your, I mean, it's she practices it, so it's it's it, when your kids are thirty three and they turn into something amazing. I mean, and they can say, "Dad, you're pretty cool yourself." I mean, they think I rock it, so it's pretty, Hell it's yeah. pretty amazing. So I know yeah, you know, it's I, cool I to be proud of our idea. kids, but in the same token, like you just said, it is so cool to hear our kids be proud of us. Be like, oh, oh yeah. I'll, I'll hear my daughter talking sometimes to her friends, and and they're like. Oh, is that the bearded dad? Like, yeah, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she hangs out with a bunch of hippies out there in San Diego. And, and she says, here, look at my dad. And, and they go, holy Christ. So. <laughs> I, I love I love the, the, the first person in bed gets a massage idea technique. Oh. I, I wish I'd have, I wish I would have heard that about, I don't know. 10 years ago, you know what I mean? Great. I mean, My today it sounds weird. Now, but... I mean, a guy giving his daughter's massage, but I'll tell you, um, when they were little, they relaxed. I could tell that that was like a very good thing for them. And, you know, no, I, did. 
I, I feel a parent should be uh, very close to their kids like that. So, um, you know, it's a safe place, you know, yeah. it was, Expe it was, especially it was, today, man, kids are getting them bombarded with all kinds of crazy shit on the daily with, you know, they're constantly in their phones and all the other, other, other avenues. But no, I, yeah, I like that idea. Those, those parents and young kids out there, spend time with your kids, read a book, give them a foot massage. For God's sake. Yeah. A foot bath. <laughs> now, I'm wondering, actually, that one picture that you showed, Ron, with Mark on the rock holding the stick, uh -huh. I was like, hell yeah, we just got done. I'm going home for food and a foot massage. <laughs> yeah. Home for food and a foot bath. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, though. He looks like he might have to go back to his cave and grab a few things first. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like I'm jumping through air there, you know. I'm not even touching right. the ground. That's right. Right. Yeah, that was fun to hike. Yeah, man. Oh, it just looks like you had a blast out there. It done my heart good to see you out there having fun, Mark. I'm, I'm glad you got that experience. Oh, uh, well, I probably post too many pictures of myself, but you can no. taste, taste of what my life is like. Hey, we like seeing the journeys you're on, man. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So, absolutely. hey, we got the Lumberjack Festival coming up in uh, Old Town Lansing. So that's coming up in that? two, two weeks. Lansing, Michigan. Yeah, Old Town Lansing, Michigan. Oh, yeah. So, too, too far I'll be, away. I'll be judging that one. So, two weekends. Oh, wait, two weekends. Next weekend There's is the Nordic Fire Festival. Gotcha. That one sounds like a fun time. That is. They actually burn a Viking boat boat on Friday night. So, they take this huge Viking ship, mm -hmm. all made out of wood, and they put bales of hay underneath the thing, and it's got a dragon face and they light this thing up in front of the crowd on friday night after dark and it goes up in a blaze and it's the most coolest thing to shoot pictures of and, yeah, uh, I, I heard you talking about it on uh sending on sundays and i was like man how cool to be seated that viking funeral with the boat and everything i i hope nobody's in it or a few I was, that that was gonna be my question i mean do they keep somebody I don't think it's a, ice, or is it just it's, it's ceremonial not every year ice. they burn a boat I, they make a new boat every year for it and i don't okay. think there's a casket in it or anything like Nobody. that. no i hope yeah, you know. Know. i mean yeah. that would be kind of cool uh you know I, I, yeah i don't have those those type of arrangements made if for the, myself quite yet but the organizers uh, going out they can put going out with a blaze like of glory right yeah that'd, that'd be, be badass there, but, yeah but, they draw a huge crowd at this. I've never seen such great beards than at the fire festival at the Nordic. I mean, these guys all dress up like Vikings. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I've, we pick a lot of our contestants out of the crowd and there's no problem getting beards out of this crowd. So, um, nice. but that should be a, a fun one. There's one hey. from uh, Mark Mark Engstrom. He said he met you years ago. At the, was the very first beard friend that uh, that he made. He can't wait to see you again. Oh yeah, yeah. I I know Mark. Yeah, he does a great freestyle. Is there something you would love to photograph? Something you haven't got a chance to? Oh wow, that could be wide it, open right there. Have to be wow. landscape somewhere. Um, I would love to do the Canadian Rockies. I mean, I would love to shoot the Canadian Rockies, but I've never been that far north in the middle of the U.S. But, yeah, that would probably be my I, – I used to love to shoot landscape. I've climbed through Yosemite. I almost killed myself in Yosemite. Um, but uh, I got some great shots out there. Now I don't trust myself as far as hiking as much, but it'd have to be uh, Canadian Rockies, you know? That's a that's a great answer. It's beautiful out that way. I've seen pictures and stuff. I've never been there myself, but it is a beautiful area. Yes, yeah. indeed, indeed. I, I just got to find area. a partner that wants to go with me, and I'm taking off. <laughs> you need you need a trailer with a burrow, and just saddle that burrow up and ride through the Rockies, snapping landscapes. I'll put my I'll put my picture on it and use my mustache for a sale. Maybe I'll get better mu gas mileage. Yeah, there you go. Catch the wind in that thing. <laughs> yeah, that's, oh, that's great. Sweet. You hang that'd your beard sweet. off of it, make it bigger. <laughs> well, you guys look great tonight. Thank you. Well, thank uh, you so much, Mark. We appreciate the crap out of you coming on tonight, man. I know. 
uh, we hit you up last week and you, you were out West and everything. And, and I apologize for your, uh, interrupting your trip, but we were glad we were able to get you on today. Always a great time when I see your shooting photos somewhere. I know I'm getting ready to get some high quality photos and, and always a good shot and just good company. You know, we had a yeah. blast at Sasquatch last year. Just always good to be with you, Mr. Mark. I appreciate you guys having me on. Thank you so much. And again, go visit my natural Viking. Check out your maker. <laughs> You're about as good as that as I am. Here, I don't know how to get it there. Oh, there, there you go. go. Right there. there natural there Viking. You go. Solid. You got Naturalviking.com. Thank you. Sorry. No, don't no. be sorry. We love you, Brother Mark, and we'll talk to you very soon, sir. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thanks love so you much. Night. Take care, brother. Man, what an awesome fellow. Yes, dude. He he makes me happy about life, about everything. No, just all all around, just amazing. And I wasn't joking when, you know, I, <clears throat> that first competition. You know, all new faces and new people, and going back through pictures. Now I've seen them several times, but. You know, hey, go up here on the stage and, you know, talk to the taxi Phil and then go off stage and go over here and talk to, you know, get your picture taken. And I, I mean, he was just, hey, nice looking mustache. Just stamp, just put put me at ease. And just the rest of the the rest of the deal was was smooth sailing. And yeah, just a, a, an amazing images he captures. So, man, I, I love it. Like uh, last year he was running around at um, Big Wit or Big Wit had his tro Nationals trophy. You know, and he's just so happy, man. He just, he's contagiously happy. I, I can't, I don't know how else to say it. It's hard, so, to, hard, hard to not catch that, uh, that, that positivity vibe, man. It's contagious. Absolutely. So a couple things I wanted to touch base on right fast. Like that's never going to happen. Cause I'm not rice fast. Like, but, uh, so. we missed last week, man. We're doing it twice doing a twofer sorry had to so we got the <laughs> raffle going for uh for our last month's guest uh, yes that raffle, the money from that is going to go to the turning point domestic violence shelter in columbus indiana great yes, five dollars uh, we got wood burning we got some books from kelly parks uh, just all kinds of good stuff so definitely yes. get in on that. Five bucks a hit. Uh, we'll end that yep. at the end of the month, and we'll do the drawing on the first day of March. PayPal right there. Bearded Biz, at Bearded Biz. Five dollars a spot. Get in it to win it. You know you want to. You know Even you need to. Get in it. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, hell, if, you, if you're just wanting to donate, donate it. It's going to a great cause. Uh, turning point. Domestic violence. Absolutely. And then... I, I now, let me clarify. Myself. Domestic violence is not a great cause, but supporting victims of domestic violence. I want to just, in case that came supporting out here. Supporting charity is a great cause. The the need for the charity sucks. <laughs> 100%. So then the next thing I have to touch on, because I'm not going to not touch on it until August, so we'll just get burnt out on seeing it, is the Shave for Prostate fundraiser I have going on for... Um, Zero for prostate cancer. It's a charity that does a, a lot of awareness and screening for screening stuff, prevention stuff, a lot of materials, helps families yep. who are going through prostate cancer, individuals getting them resources. So um call it Shave for Prostate because I think there's uh five guys now that's gonna lose some facial hair uh August at the Bearded Theater competition here in Indiana uh for this cause. We're looking to raise at least four thousand dollars. We'd love to raise forty thousand dollars, but we're going to shave if we raise four. So uh, you might see myself. I have committed to take the middle part of my beard away and just stay with these glorious sides as a Chop Squad member. But no guarantee on a speedo yet. Yeah, there's not facial hair getting lost. There's also some head hair getting lost. I think uh, Joker's not only shaving his mustache, but he's also shaving his head, right? Yes. He's going for the head and the mustache. Yep. So, so amazing calls. I've said it before. I'll say it again. Uh, Men's Health. It's an awesome organization. Shave for Prostate. I always get the ticker direction going the wrong way. At Shave for Prostate. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. 
What else is uh what else is going on? What else you need to plug? What's up, man? Oh, I don't know. We need to probably talk about the pack coming up on Wednesday. I think we should on the Bearded Family Network. You see it up there in the corner. Check it out on YouTube. Check it out on the page. Check it out on the pack social club. Wednesdays, you got the sideshow with the ladies uh Britt and Bethany on Thursday. Yeah, on and then Thursday. Of course, yep. And then of course sending on Sundays with our boys Billy and Chris. Sure. Yep, and then you get back to our smiling faces on the Bearded Family Network on Monday. Absolutely correct, Thank Mr. Phil. Jones. Absolutely get correct, tested. sir. Get tested. Absolutely. It's uh, it's important. Regardless, I mean, obviously, you get up a certain age, it's more important to do more frequently, but, you know, I'm I'm mid, mid-40s, mid getting to the 50s, so <laughs> get tested. It's important. Early intervention. Right, right. right. Taxi Phil, love um, that you're on. Thank you for viewing. I've seen you on uh, several shows, so thank you for your support, good sir. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. Coming up uh, here in about two weeks. I mean, I don't want to spill the tea, but my best six, by God, coming up that? here in a couple of weeks. My best six is coming up. Looking forward to that. I hadn't heard anything about that. Is that one of them dog and pony shows? Oh, there's maybe some dogs, maybe some ponies, and a lot of cool people. I don't know about dogs and ponies. Ah, I'm see. there if there's cool people. <laughs> Come on. Come on, Phil. Seriously? Seriously? Right on. Hey, and for the record, Phil, I heard you mention the other night that uh, Stash doesn't spell it right. That's how the club gave me the name. So, yeah. I, that's, yeah, S-T-A-C-H. I'm illiterate. Blame me. Yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> but I'm not sure about me either, I guess. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> um, Bearded Theater coming up in August. If you haven't marked your calendars, mark your damn calendars. It's going to be exciting. Uh, Beard Mob Indiana is going to host her second comp. Good stuff. Um, yeah, we might sure have to get some famous photographer like Mark Burns to come down from Michigan or something. I think we know a guy. Maybe we can talk him into to sliding down. Uh, make it make it two years in a row. That would be freaking sweet. That would be it freaking would be sweet. sweet. Mark had a good time last year. Yeah. So. Well, guys, right, brother, it's Dunday Monday, and we done day. day. We done day. Number done seven day. in the books. I appreciate everybody tuning in, talking with Ron and I. Appreciate everybody's engagement in the chat. Appreciate um, Ray Norcross hopping on talking about the new deal down in uh the AWS. Kentucky, that's right the uh, kentucky whisker society um Correct. great way to pull clubs together we're all trying to do the same thing how do we help each other out big shout out to mark burns appreciate you coming on the show talking to us and um i, I learned i learned some stuff i didn't realize that he had started out selling equipment so yeah, I, I did not know that either. I did not know the background. So that, that was really Definitely. cool getting to know kind of where his story came from. Absolutely. After that, like, wiped out like six questions that I had written down. Like, where'd you get your start? <laughs> blah, 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 blah. It's like, well, hey, no, that, that knocks, knocks it out. No. Hey, sometimes our guests make this easy, you know? Yeah, uh, for sure. For sure. So. so, yeah, man. And most of all, man, I, pre I appreciate this guy. I appreciate this guy sitting right over here, hanging out on oh, a Monday, yeah. Monday, Dunday. So Monday, Monday. Sweet. All right. Well, thanks everybody for your support. Thank you for tuning in on another Dunday, Monday. We'll see you on the next one. Awesome. Love you guys. Be good. Take care. Do good shit. Love y'all. Do good shit.